you're up on the story. Maybe you were watching earlier. You probably weren't. I alluded to the fact that they're selling us on the idea that Aaron Rodgers had no input, no notice, no idea that Woody Johnson was doing this. That's the apparently official version that they haven't articulated, but that's the vibe. I had no idea this was happening. Woody Johnson can run the team as he sees fits. He's got no obligation to tell me anything. And I mention that again because here's a little Aaron Rodgers from July of 2021 with a somewhat different vibe about his opinions on how he should be involved in big decisions. Have a listen. The other part uh, in, in February was wanting to be a part of conversations involving free agents, uh, which has never happened in my career. Um, you know, I've, I've trained with a number of NFL guys most of my career in the off seasons. Um, my agency at these first has had a number of high draft picks over the years. Uh, I've tried to pass along information. Um, hasn't really been uh, used, shall we say. And the fact that I haven't been used in those discussions was one I wanted to change moving forward. And I felt like based on my years, uh, the way I can still play, that that should be a natural part of the conversation. How now, dare you? The context how was dare free you, agents. Mike? The context how dare you was bring free up agents. Yeah, how, <laughs> how, how dare we use words that he used in the past? Yeah, I've been immunized. But uh, I, the other thing, too, man, it's been and, – and I don't know. I try not to look back at videos of me from three years ago, but, man – is that Aaron Rodgers? I don't know that that's Aaron Rodgers. I think we may need to check. That, that doesn't look like the Aaron Rodgers that I see now. But uh, setting that aside, ayahuasca can do that to you. I'm not, I'm not being a smartass here. Apparently, ayahuasca can do that to you. Um, but uh, regardless, he wanted a seat at the table. And it was free agents then. But you know, I remember him arguing when Matt LaFleur put in the offense with very limited ability of the quarterback to call audibles. And his attitude was, I've been doing this 15 years. Why don't you trust me to have a broader range of plays available? This is the same thing. Right. I've been around for 20 years. You're not going to talk to me before you just fire the coach? You're not going to give me a heads up? That's why I reject this idea that he had no input and he had no notice. Because if you do that to Aaron Rodgers, what you get is a press, press conference like the one that we saw in July of 2021. Yeah, I mean, come on, Mike. He's a de facto executive there. Like, why? I don't even understand why anyone at this point would really believe this, you know, storyline that oh, I, I'm surprised that people think I have this much power in the organization. Really? Are you serious? Because they went out and got players that you wanted them to get. Alan Lazard is there because of you. Randall Cobb was there because of you. Nathaniel Hackett got two jobs. He got a job with the Broncos because they <laughs> thought true. they were going to get you. That's, okay. That's true. And then he got it. And then he immediately <laughs> got an OC job at, at, with the Jets because they 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 wanted to pair him with you. Um, I'll give you another story. Okay. And and I think to me, this underscores uh, it, precisely how much power he has. When I go through there in the summer and I'm and on my on my training camp tour and I, I'm talking to someone um, there in the brain trust about Hassan Reddick, right? What what this person said to me was, well, there's not a lot of pressure, you know, internally in our in our organization to force this and get this done. It's not like Aaron Rodgers has stepped up and said, hey, you need to get that finished. You're like, we need this guy in there. And and this person said to me, like, you know, Aaron doesn't even really have a relationship with this guy. So there's not that kind of internal pressure point for us to get this done. And I'm like, OK, so that's pretty suggestive that if Aaron had spoken up and said, why isn't Hassan Reddick in here right now? You know, we need this player in here that it could have changed whether or not Hassan Reddick had a deal. You are you're an executive at that point. You are part of um, the decision making tree there. So I, I just it's it's absurd to me that. It's number one, it's interesting that you don't see Joe Douglas's name, the general manager there inside 100 miles of this decision, right? You don't he's not brought up. He's not on any statement. He's not talking to anyone completely absent of this, right? Rogers, same deal. They've completely made sure that Rogers is outside of the blast radius of any of this. All there is is the one phone call that, you know, got made where supposedly Woody Johnson's calling just to say, hey, how you doing? In no world, given Aaron Rodgers history. Um, as you said, the tape you played, how he likes to be involved, um, and then how they've operated since they brought him in. Does an owner make that decision and not, at the very least, make sure Rodgers is going to be okay with it or not put up some kind of a fight? I'm not saying that Rodgers fired Robert Sala, 
But the idea that Rodgers had no clue whatsoever that Robert Sala could be out um, and that Woody Johnson would make this unilater unilaterally and not have any discussion at all with Aaron Rodgers about it, I do not find that believable. The problem is only two individuals could know about that conversation. That's Aaron and Woody. And if Aaron and Woody say it didn't happen, then that's the story. It didn't happen. The only way that makes sense is if Woody Johnson, Mr. Magood, his way into it, completely mishandled it, didn't run it by Aaron, but it just coincidentally happened to be the thing Aaron wanted anyway. That's the only way, the only way that what they're telling us is true. I know I got to let you run. Before you go, though, I'll give you as much time as you want to take, given the confines that you got to run. Is Nathaniel Hackett in trouble despite the fact that it looks like he was saved this week? Okay, so um, my conversations with individuals who knew kind of, I don't want to even say kind of, they knew what Woody Johnson's thought process was going through this. What I was told was that, um, I, I said, look, did, did Nathaniel Hackett potentially being demoted, was this the thing that ultimately caused the delay? Why wasn't he fired on, why wasn't Robert Sala fired on Monday? Why was he fought, fired on Tuesday? Why was Sala allowed into the building and then had to be let out by security. Like, why was this so messy? Is this because the, all of a sudden it's like Nathaniel Hackett's going to get demoted. Aaron's upset. We got to, we got to hurry. We just got to fire Sal. We got to get out from under this. Actually, I had someone who said to me, and, and I'm going to paraphrase it here, but it was like, look, there's not a lot of belief in terms of Woody Johnson, what he's seen on the field. There's not a ton of belief from Woody Johnson's standpoint that Nathaniel Hackett is a good coach, that he's doing a great job. And this person said to me, frankly, if Robert Sala had gone to Woody Johnson, say a week earlier and said, I'm thinking about demoting Nathaniel Hackett, I'm thinking about taking um, play calling duties away from him. This person said to me, Woody Johnson might have taken that as a positive that, oh, OK, look at Robert Sala. He's stepping up and he's making this decision. He sees the lack of cohesion and he's actually doing something about it, that that could potentially have been a positive for Woody Johnson. And I do think that Jeff Ulbrich. The, the interim head coach that clearly inside that organization, when you talk to people, Woody Johnson has had an affinity for, for a while. Um, I, I do think it's realistic that Ulbrick is going to have Hackett on a short leash. And I had someone tell me, look, if he retains play calling duties, I would watch the Buffalo game on Monday night. And if the offense is absolutely terrible, I think that might be the end of his, his play calling duties, him having ownership of that offense after the Buffalo game, which, so the signal to me is, He's on the clock there. There's, there's, it's, it's not just a Robert Sala thing. It actually is a Nathaniel Hackett thing. And if this continues the way it's going, he would not be surprised at all if Hackett gets demoted regardless. And whatever happens, Aaron Rodgers will have had no input, no advance notice, no power yeah. whatsoever. Right. Uh, all right. You can check out Charles' quarterback room article every Tuesday at yahoo.com slash NFL. Charles, thanks again for some of your time. We'll do it again. Thanks, Mike. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.